I have a new location yet. <laughs> Another location in the house today. So good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Dorothy McGriff. Hi, Ruth. Good afternoon, everybody. Buenas tardes. I'm in my middle son's room. So let me see. Move this out of the way. So yes, I'm almost out of rooms, right? How is everybody doing? Hi, Alice. How is everybody doing? Buenas tardes. Happy Sunday. Today we're going to be talking about um, something that, can you hear me very well on Tina Live? Because I have my, my mic, I feel like my mic is far away, but hi, Al hi Albert, hi. Well, wait, let's get started, right? Um, without further ado, my name is Dr. Lulu, aka the momatrician, national and international speaker on child, teen and young adult depression and suicide, and parent coach. And today we're going to talk about ACEs. And so I have my Facebook um, as Dr. Lulu and Tina Live on my computer, and I have my regular Facebook page. So if you see me looking like this, that's what's going on up in here. <laughs> I'm trying to put all of you. She says she can hear me. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Ellis, for just always being such a trooper. I'm going to try to do this just so I'm not looking. Yeah, well, I'm sure you could tell that I'm looking over here at my phone and over here at my laptop. There's only so much I can do, the magic of technology. So let's get started. And so yes, my middle son is my trumpet player. So you can see he's trumpet in the background. And my jazz artist, yeah, who is doing an architecture major. So we're borrowing his room today just to kind of try it out and see if I like it better because um, some, uh, my house is going through some changes. People are moving into places that they're not supposed to be moving into. So things are happening. Anyway. Let's get started. So we're talking about ACEs and your child today. Today's topic is ACEs and your child. So ACEs is defined as adverse childhood experiences. Adverse childhood experiences. So if you know anyone who should be watching this, any parent, any adult caregiver, any anybody really who has a child, who has an adult who has suffered with any kind of illnesses like heart disease, emphysema, cancer even, please invite them to watch this. Just take a second to invite them. My regular inviter is not here, my son, so I'm not able to invite people like he normally does, but hopefully we'll get as many people as possible to watch. So let's get started. So before we start, we're gonna observe one minute of silence. Normally I do 40 seconds of silence. We're going to do one minute today because I'm adding 20 extra seconds for the three kids that have just, well, actually the 40 seconds for the three kids on the four kids that have died by suicide since school started that I've been made aware of. And then the extra 20 seconds for, I think his name is, last name is Brown who was gunned down in cold blood yesterday. And his only crime was that he was the um, key witness in Amber Gruyer's, whatever, I don't know how to say her last name, case. So we're gonna begin now, it's 2.04, with a minute of silence, all right? Thank you. Thank you so much for indulging me with that minute of silence. And so the 40 seconds of that minute was for the three or four children that have died by suicide so far that I've been made aware of since school started. One of them is a 17 year old here in San Antonio. And then the other three are kids, you know, just around the US of A. And of course the extra 20 seconds was for the little guy 
who was just basically gone down in cold blood yesterday. And his only crime was that he was a key witness for Miss Amber's case. I, I don't even want to go into the fact that honestly, honestly, if you're white and you're watching me, just say a prayer for yourself and for all the other white people who just don't understand that black lives really do matter. Honestly, black lives really honestly do matter. That, that guy, all he said was it could have been me. And indeed, it could have been him. If Miss Amber accidentally opened a door of an apartment that is not hers and shot a guy that was not wearing any shirt, watching, watching TV and eating ice cream down, then it could have been him. But you know what? It's unfortunate that this is the kind of life that we live in. And some, some of us have to say something. You know, even if my, well, my words don't land on any fertile soil, I would have said something. And in my heart, I've done my piece, I think. Okay, of course, I'm going to follow it up with action. But the rest of y'all, what are y'all doing? You know? But I digress. Today's topic is ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences, aka Toxic Stress or Childhood Trauma. So if you're watching me and you're a parent, please give me a thumbs up. Hi, Sulanya. If you're watching me and you're a parent, please give me a thumbs up. Hi, Connie Marie Cespedes. Nice last name. Very nice. Hi, Auntie Edith. What's going on? Mary Jane Collins. What's going on? If you're a parent and you're watching me, please give me a thumbs up. And if you know what ACEs is, give me two thumbs up or a heart, because I just learned about it not recently, but not too long ago, what ACEs is. So the backstory is in 1997, between 1995 and 1997, Kaiser Permanente and CDC went into the little study on children, well, really on adults, excuse me, and they found out that a lot of their obese patients in their clinic were being lost to follow up. And they were wondering why, what's going on, why? Even though they lost weight, they still lost them to follow up. And so they just said, let's find out why are these people not keeping their appointments? What's going on? What's the deal with that? And then eventually they, 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 found, they found out that um, they, they, they looked at health outcomes and the, the pasts of these adults. And then they found out that there was an association between the um, basically trauma in childhood and the health outcomes of the adults. And it was not black adults or white adults, it was just mixed. You know, any kind of adult who had experienced some degree of childhood trauma, they all ended up um, having peculiar disease profiles and health, and health outcomes as adults, including suicide and including early death. So of course, you know, if there's suicide involved, I have to be talking about it. So that's actually kind of sort of why I, I picked this topic to talk about today. So thumbs up for those guys, Kaiser Permanente and CDC, thumbs up. But all you got to do is just Google ACEs, just Google at, um, Adverse Childhood Experiences, and you know, just, it will pop up. So basically what they found, they, they looked at 10 different pointers or 10 different traits or 10 different situations or conditions, however you want to name it. And they found out that these 10, the higher you scored on the, what they call now, they now call the ACEs score, the higher you score in that, then the higher the likelihood of, of um, ending up with um, these particular disease profiles. And so they looked at physical abuse, right? Where physical abuse is defined as intentionally causing trauma or injury to somebody with bodily contact. So physical abuse is intentionally, and anytime there's abuse, it also means repeatedly, right? But, uh, but physical means there's some kind of body harm involved or your body is affected somehow. So either intentionally or not intentionally. But anyway, because for me, I feel like you can also not intentionally hit someone and then it becomes intentional after a while because that's kind of how a bully is, is born. So intentionally causing bodily harm to someone, okay, is physical abuse. Then they looked at sexual abuse. That was the second trick that was looked at or history that was looked at. Then they looked at emotional abuse. And emotional, of course, is whether intentionally or not causing psychological trauma to your victim or to someone or a child in this case, right? Then physical neglect, and neglect means there's someone, an older person, 
who is supposed to be taking care of somebody and they're not doing that. Okay? Then emotional neglect. Okay? And then they looked at household history of domestic abuse. They looked at substance abuse. They looked at household history of mental illness. So household domestic abuse, household substance abuse, and household mental illness. And then they looked at parental separation or divorce, which my kids fall into that, okay? Parental separation or divorce. And then they looked at incarceration of a household member, okay? Incarceration of a household member. So the 10 were physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical neglect, emotional neg neglect, household domestic abuse, household substance abuse, household mental illness, household parental, well, I guess, parental separation or divorce. And lastly, they looked at incar incarceration of a household member. And they looked at the, the effects of these 10 factors on children across a lifetime. So across a lifespan of kids. And they found out that these children ended up kind of having developing social, emotional, and even cognitive disorders, you know, which, you know, you almost take it for granted, right? Like, you know, someone who's been abused physically, yeah, they're going to end up. But what about just the fact that there's an incarceration in the family? You know, you wouldn't expect that incarceration in the family can cause a child to be traumatized. I mean, it makes sense when you kind of look at it. I mean, really, I'm talking about kids in general, but you can just plug in any black child in the hood, and then this kind of makes sense, right? So even my kids, at least they have, they score one or two points in this list, you know, because they were, they, they've, they've gone through parental divorce. So that in on, in on its own is, is, a, is a point. And then I've had depression. So even parental depression, which is a part of one of the factors is parental mental illness, whereas in my case, it was reactive depression, but it was depression nonetheless. And I dare to add bankruptcy on there because that was what, what kind of made me become suicidal. So indeed, when you have all of these factors in the home, when the child is, is being raised, then on a long-term basis, the child can develop social, emotional, and cognitive impairment, right? There's something called, and anybody who's watching me, just when you get off the, the, the video, watch, look, look up ACES pyramid. There's a whole, almost like the population pyramid or the food pyramid. There's a pyramid where, of course, the base of that is the childhood experiences and, you know, all of that childhood trauma, toxic stress on the child. And then as you go up, there's early death at the top of it because indeed they found out that it's related to early death. And then they also found out that these children who have been exposed to these factors as children also tend to adopt a lot of high risk behavior. And it makes sense. If you've been emotionally neglected or physically abused or sexually abused, then of course promiscuity tends to be one of those things that come out of that, right? And that we know can cause you to have, you know, to be exposed to STIs and abuse, further abuse, you know, from your boyfriend or your domestic partner or even just rape, right? From the people that are looking for love in all those wrong places. And then we look at um, the disease and the disabilities that kind of came out of that and social problems that came out of that. And I go back to racism, if you would allow me, only because racism is a prototype of generational trauma right generational abuse right you know a whole slew of people 100 million of them died during the middle passage and then those that survived that made it here were lynched they were beaten they were tortured they were hunted down they're still being hunted down you know we just talked about the little the guy that was killed yesterday in cold blood Black men, black women are being raped. Yes, women are being raped overall, but black women specifically, we don't count. I mean, look at Sandra Bland. If anybody watching me cares, you can look up NHI, police code for no human involved, which is the code that they use for when a black person is, is arrested and tortured or killed. You know, it's like, it's a generational trauma. So when you put in a black child in that 
this kids that we're talking about, then it makes sense that our kids end up with behavior problems and all kinds of trauma and anger and PTSD, which I learned PTSS, also known as post-traumatic slave syndrome, you know, and all kinds of things that can affect these kids that have gone through this kind of trauma, you know? And then what are these disease processes that we're talking about, you know? We're talking about um, obesity, we're talking about smoking, we're talking about alcoholism, we're talking about um, promiscuity, drug abuse. I didn't even think about it, but severe obesity, yes, a lot of people who are obese, we don't know which one comes first, the chicken or the egg. Is it the obesity that makes them become like emotionally traumatized and depressed and emotionally down? Or is it emotional downness, if you want to call it that, that now spurs them to become emotional eaters and then become obese, which now becomes a positive, you know, vicious cycle. And then the, the person just becomes morbidly obese. And it doesn't help that the outside world teases them, makes fun of them, bullies them. And then they feel so stigmatized. They don't want to go get help. I mean, it, you can see how easily that can be explained. So I was so happy to learn about ACEs and the fact that if you're watching me today and you have a child, please make sure that your doctor, your pediatrician, your, your you know, I don't know, family practice provider is, you know, checking your child for ACEs. One of the things that we talked about that they can get is cognitive and emotional problems. You know, these kids that are being diagnosed with ADHD left, right and center, one of the doctors in California, and I forget her name right now. Oh my God, God forgive me, I forget her name. But she did this study in pediatrics. Now, the Kaiser Permanente and the CDC study was in adults. But she now did a study in pediatric patients because she also noticed that, you know, a lot of the kids that are coming to her with, oh, you know, with um, parents that are coming to her asking her to check their kids for, for ADHD, she said, Kind of connecting the dots and, and looking to see that are these kids also traumatized? Are they have they been exposed to these ACEs that we're talking about? And then she found that indeed, even in children that have been exposed to toxic stress, you know, they can also present sooner with these cognitive behavioral problems that some of us are calling ADHD and learning disorder, you know, which may very well be explained by stress and toxic stress. So why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because one of the, the factors that can cause stress in children is bullying, right? Bullying can come under physical abuse. It can come under emotional abuse. And quite frankly, bullying can come under domestic abuse. Bullying can come under sexual abuse. So, you know, there you go, you know, just a lot of those. And the bully themselves could be, could have mental illness. The bullied can have mental illness. Parental separation, remarrying the wrong person can cause further abuse in the home. So you can see why bullying comes in here and therefore child suicide comes in here, you know? Mostly the, the ACEs were studied in children under the age of 18. But who says that at the age of 11, you can't start manifesting these, you know, outcomes or these secondary effects of the trauma that you've been through? You know, so depression, heart disease, chronic lung disease, cancer, which you can explain because of all the 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 high the hormones that kind of come out the the adrenaline and the cortisol. They are good for fight, fright, and flight, but they are not good when it's sustained. And imagine a child who lives in a house where their stepfather or their stepmother, depending on who it is, has um, is abusive, right? So essentially that child's home is a source of toxic stress. That child's home is constantly causing them to be stressed out. The home, the home is supposed to be the sanctuary, supposed to be the place where you can go and you have peace and quiet. If you ask my wife, she's not gonna say that, but <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, but peace and quiet, and no stress. Imagine if your abuser lives in the home. Can you see why? These kids can develop this kind of stressors as you know as time goes. So I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And you know, when I talk about these things because I want you all as parents to check yourself, check your home. Do you have any of these ten factors? Just Google Aces questionnaire and take the questionnaire. Maybe you yourself 
have been traumatized as a child because there's a certain adult that I know that um, she had the she had about five or six of these things. Then it makes sense that now as an adult, she's manifesting with some of these things that we're talking about. So please, cancer is bad. You all know cancer cuts you down and kills you early. And, um, you know, suicide. Actually, let me see if I found if I have that number. There's a place where they mentioned the effect of this on suicide. Um, gosh, I don't know. Okay, yes. So ACEs scores of four or more. So when you do the test, if you if you check off each of those ten points, if you score four or more in that, you have a high rate of developing alcoholism, cancer, or emphysema, which is chronic lung disease, okay? And then if you score six or more in the ACEs score, you have a high chance of, of having suicide attempt. This is, of course, after the age of 18. But I dare to say we do in the Black community, we have a lot of, now that we know that Black kids, Black children, who are age five to 11 have a higher rate of suicide than their twice as much as their white counterparts, then we need to start going back to ask ourselves those questions, right? Like these kids, is it really, is it, could, it, could the problem be that they've been exposed to a lot of toxic, toxic stress as they're growing up? So I guess you wanna know, you know, like for me, because I'm talking about it, then what do we do, right? But before we talk about what we do, let's talk about, epigenetics. And I, I wanted to mention epigenetics because I talked about epigenetics yesterday at my little event that I spoke at, but epigenetics is the is defined, is basically a situation whereby you have a mother who has been, who her herself has been exposed to all of these stresses during the pregnancy. And then the child, the offspring of that pregnancy develops ACEs. Now, can you believe that? Like, so that's, of course, the negative, but also the reverse can be the case. If a mother has all these positive things happening to her when she's pregnant, then it's very high likelihood that the child will be born. And I think the example that they gave was some rats, some lab rats that were, as soon as they were born, they were exposed to a lot of stress, like all kinds of nasty trauma. And then when they were returned back to their moms, they had two, two groups of rats, one group of the rats, their mothers were like, well, I mean, you know, deal with it, you've been exposed to stress, so what kind of thing. And then the other group of rats, their mothers were like really loving on them and hugging them and not hugging, but licking their, their lickers and non-lickers, and they were licking them and just kind of loving on them and doing a lot of stress. Those rats whose mothers were lickers grew up to have babies. They were they themselves were lickers when they grew up, and then their babies also became lickers. So they were good, good rats, so to say. Now, and they did another um, exper experiment where they switched the babies. So the liquor rats were switched with the non-liquor moms and vice versa. And do you know that they found out that the liquor, the, the rats that were switched to the non-liquor rats that were switched to the liquor moms, when they grew up, they became liquors themselves. So basically the good traits that they got somehow found their way into their DNA. Yeah, I'm saying that for rats because, you know, as we use lab rats for all the experiments for humans, we can also transpose that in humans. So basically a child is a product of their environment, right? So if a child is raised around a lot of nurturing and goodness and all the fruit fruit stuff, that child grows up also to become a nurturer and a fruit fruit kind of child. So what I was saying is when you come back to this part of why are there bullies to begin with in the household? A lot of those bullies themselves have been exposed to a lot of stress. And now we're saying that if you're nice and nurturing and giving, sorry about that, giving a lot to your kids and you're, and you're just giving your kids a lot of, I don't know what, what that noise was. Oh, it's in my garage. Okay. If you're, if you're giving a lot to your kids and you're nurturing your kids, so your kids grow up in a very nurturing environment, they find out that people who had zero, on their ACEs scores, they had a very, very low rate of these disease processes that we're talking about. So what I'm saying is you cannot actually separate epigenetics from life, okay? So all of these moms who end up having babies who were 
who had been because the mother had been in a very good environment and there was no toxicity when she was pregnant the babies came out okay those babies themselves grew up to have long life and prosperity right and then vice versa so when a child is a bully a lot of times that child also has a high risk of suicide but then we have these three suicides that just occurred because those kids had been bullied so you can see now how toxic trauma even in childhood can manifest even in childhood is that what i wanted to say yeah so toxic trauma in childhood can also manifest in childhood in other words we don't have to wait until they're adults to see the manifestations we're already seeing that a lot of these kids have behavior problems and so if you're a teacher if you're a parent you know that you're in a very unique position right very unique position to nurture these kids because a lot of the teachers they know the kids they know the kids who have a stressful home environment i know the kids who have a stressful home environment in my patients so one of the things that we're asking is that you as a parent as part of the global village that it takes to raise a child when you see that child extend love extend lo lovingness extend nurturing to that child because you might be the only one in their life who is giving them that kind of love okay so that's kind of it in in essence october is national bullying awareness month October, National Bullying Awareness Month. And for the breast cancer people out there, you also know that it's also National Breast Cancer Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But because I don't speak about breast cancer, but I have breasts, I have to talk about breast cancer, okay? So ladies, if you're watching me, do please get your mammogram already. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Or like we say in Nigeria, to be forewarned is to be forearmy. So please, please get your mammograms done, okay? That's one. And number two, October 10th is actually the National Bullying Day. So I'm supposed to be doing a Facebook Live. So look out for that next week. Um, let me see. Is there anything else? Actually, this week. Yeah, this week. So, um, okay, that's about it. So that's all I had for y'all. If you have any questions, please let me know. How at your girl if you have any questions or any concerns whatsoever. But indeed, ACES is real. Anyone who is watching me right now, hi, Sharon. Do your ACES score and let me know what you've got. Just Google ACES questionnaire, okay, and it will pop up. There are 10, 10 factors that I looked at. I'm just going to go real quick. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical neglect, emotional neg neg neglect, household domestic abuse, household substance, house substance abuse, household mental illness, parental separation and divorce, incarceration in a household member. Those are the 10 factors that I looked at and they found out that those were associated with long-term early onset of health disparities in the sufferers. And now we're beginning to see even in pediatric patients that they also do manifest some of these things younger and therefore um, can, can end up with, with the, the, the health effects. I don't know that kids necessarily have emphysema, but kids do have asthma. And a lot of you guys know that a lot of your patients, when they get stressed out, their asthma gets worse. So this is kind of what I'm talking about, even in childhood. So please, if your doctor is not screening your, um, your child for ACEs, tell them, I know that I'm going to, be, I'm going to start screening my patients for ACEs right now um, because I want to know that all of those kids that come to you and you think it's ADHD, start checking, start looking. Is it ADHD or is it something else? Hmm? All right, folks, it was nice hanging out with y'all today. Thank you so much for the love. There was a bunch of people on Tina Live today. Dorothy, Ruth, Albert, Alice, Sulanya, Bumi, hi, and Tawanda Lynn Frazier. And on my Ask Dr. Lulu page, I had Alice, Connie, Marie Cespedes, and of course, Sharon K. Edwards. And Philip, hi, Anne. Nenengwe K. Ellen S. Wright, Maimuna Dalhat, Millie Benjamin, Benjamin Nova, what? What are you? Okaro, Lapateria Davis, hey girl, Rebecca Echakara, Connie Marie Cespedes, Eddie Akabo, um, Edith Akabogu, Mary Jane Collins, and of course, Ellis. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead. Look out for my Facebook Live. It's coming up this week on the 10th, anyway. I don't know if it's this week or not, but I think on the, but on the 10th. We're going to be talking about 
Bullying on October 10th. Bullying, okay? Tammy Lynn. Tammy Flynn. Hi, girl. I was just talking about us. So we're going to be doing a Facebook Live on the 10th of October. Please look out for that. It's going to be epic. Um, I'll keep you all posted, okay? Hala. Don't forget, parenting is difficult. It is the hardest thing you ever did in your life, but it's also the best thing you can ever do for your kids. So go out there and be the most intentional, most mindful, most productive parent that you can. All right? Ciao. Hey, thank you so much for my podcast. Oh, my God, I don't know why I forgot. 1,500 downloads. What? Thank you guys so much for listening. Please, please, please comment. Write a review or something. I appreciate it. I'll see y'all later. Bye.